Hello, I'm Jervis Lewis and in this video I'm going to show you how to create those sparkly, flashy, ever-changing border colors that some video games use to indicate that there's some loading going on in the border colors. And I'm going to do this in both in basic as well as machine language. So uh, let's see how we can do that. There is a register that we can poke a value in that will change either the border color or the background color on the VIC-2 chip. So this is going to work on the Commodore 128 as well as in the Commodore 64 and on, on both modes, both in machine language as well as in basic and the addresses are exactly the same. It's going to be different for the plus four and the VIC-20 and I've got the handy Commodore 64 user's guide here, which has such funky things in here, namely on page 60. It says what the border color is and what the background color is as a decimal value. Let's try this out. So 53280 is the border color of the VIC-2 chip and 53281 is the border color of the, is the background color of the VIC-2 chip. Well, let's uh, try this out. If we hack in a uh, number 53280, comma zero then my border should go black right hey what do you know that's amazing so all we really need then is because we only have 16 colors we might as well have a loop that loops through from color zero to color 15 that'll be 16 colors all we need then is a loop that does this and continuously changes the border color so if we were to do this with a do loop like we've just seen we can say do in line 20, we can say Pope 53280, comma I, because um, I, I guess, is the one thing that we're going to increment in line 30. I equals I plus one. In line 40, we can say if I is then, whoops, if I is larger than 15, then I is zero. And in line 50, we're going to say loop. So that should now increment i until it reaches uh, basically 16. And then it'll go back to zero and it'll just continuously change the border color of our screen. Let's see what happens. It does work indeed. It does work indeed. But that's not as spectacular as some of the loading screens we've seen. And that is, of course, because BASIC has a limited kind of um, speed at which you can change the colors. I mean, there's also the, the fact that, of course, now this is a real life Commodore 128 with a video capture device. So you can see all kinds of scan lines going on there. That doesn't look very attractive. So we could try the same thing on an emulator. Maybe I'll leave that up to you. The results may look a little bit different, but this is what it looks like with my capture card right now. So pretty slow. We'll see if we can make this a little bit faster with doing the same thing in machine language. You can, of course, do the same thing with a go-to command, so you don't have to use the do loop command. But, uh, you know, since it's available on the 128, I thought, you know, we might as well use it. So run stop will get us out of here. And uh, run stop restore will, will restore the colors as we know them. Let's see if we can do something much faster in machine language. So let's go into the monitor and start coding. So uh, I will do this at OBOO, so assemble OBOO, and I will start loading the X register with a value of zero. So that's our first color. And to kind of emulate what the programmers back then would do to indicate that something was going on, I guess I'm gonna store whatever that value is in that um, 53280, which at the moment, I don't even know what that is in hex. So let's uh, find out by just typing plus 53280, and then it'll show me that do 20 is that value in hex. So that's where I need to store that. So uh, that'll be an AOBO2 STX at DO20. Then we're going to increment X. And then basically we're just going to go up and up again. And we don't have to check for 16 colors here. We're just going to go through all the values because that's, I suppose, uh, other numbers will also generate colors. Well, I guess we'll find out, don't we? So, um, but if I were to just code this with 
JMP to that next line here, so OBO2, I guess this is where we would go back to where it stores that X value in that uh, VIC2 register, then I would never be able to get out of this program unless I hit the reset button. So rather than just jump there, I'm going to jump, I'm going to uh, call a subroutine somewhere else, which is uh, checking for the run stop key. So I believe that is an FFE1. Don't quote me on this, this may go wrong, but I believe that's what it is. And if that has in fact been pressed then we can go to something like ob i don't know say 10 uh, where we potentially would have an rts or break instruction um, now we can go and jump back not to the top of the listing because i would constantly overload my x register with zero i wanted to just go to here to ob02 so ob02 over here and then i set a branch to OB10 the moment um, I'm done. So I'm going to code a few NLP instructions here until I reach 10 and then I'm going to go with RTS over here. Um, that should be it. Should be able to call that one from the monitor as well. F uh, G F O B O O and Woo! Now that's a loading screen we do remember. That's very exciting project for enthusiasts of course if you want to also increase the background color of this screen then be my guest that'll be in do 21 uh, as seen in the commodore manual here 53 to 81 is the background color so um, you know i will leave that up to you to explore and uh, see if you have fun with that that's how these colorful loading bars would have been generated either manually like this or as part of another loading routine so you don't have to poke that value that you're incrementing in there you can just take that value that you're poking in somewhere else and just add that also to the background color register and then you make sure people notice that the computer hasn't died yet by the way let's check that uh, run stop routine so what happens if i press the run stop key it says break that's fantastic so it does return me back to basic great that was it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. If you like this video, of course, share it with friends, family, and total strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have fun retro hacking. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.